It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science game show here in the Prince George's schools where we test IQs, test your own and play along today. Today, two great middle schools, here they are. First from Oxon Hill, would you say hello to Alyssa Morris, Ryan Scotland Mitchell, and Carmela Sambles. And from William Hall Academy, here they are, Cesar Hernandez, Zaria Boyd, and Jada Forbes. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, our game board reflects question difficulty with the easier questions on the left worth five and 10, the tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. End of the two rounds today, one of these two good-looking, talented teams will come back to play our game again and perhaps become the third of our four semifinalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's make sure everything works properly. Let's go to the red team. Ryan, would you try your buzzer for me? Thank you. Good luck to you, to Carmela and to Alyssa. And William Hall, Zaria, could you try yours, please? It also looks and sounds good. Good luck to you, to Jada and to Caesar. Are we ready? Uh, I don't know about that. We're going to play this game. May the better team win. We go alphabetically O before W. So Oxen Hill and Ryan, let's play the bowl. Let's get physical for 15. It's physical for 15 points to start us out. Teams, your question is as follows. There is, adjust this for just a moment here. Just like sunglasses can turn dark when the sun comes out, photo ray, there are new windows for homes that can block out all the visible light and the infrared, meaning that new window glass is not transparent, it's not translucent, it's this. Tinted. William Hall. Tinted. Not tinted, not transparent, not translucent. It keeps out all the visible and the infrared light, making it what, Oxen Hill? Who's answering? We pass it to um, Carmela. Carmela. Opaque. Opaque. That's what I want to hear. Good answer. Okay. Red team. Go. Ryan. <clears throat> um, let's do Zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams, your question is as follows. In Bikini Bottom on SpongeBob SquarePants, the whole town was upset because an insect had invaded, a buzzing insect. But when they looked closely, it had a curled proboscis. It wasn't a hornet or a wasp. It was one of these innocent insects. William Hall. Butterfly. Butterfly, absolutely right. The proboscis that it uses to drink the nectar from the flowers. That was your clue. Go green. Um, Dateline Science for 10. Dateline Science for 10 points. Teams, when the New Horizons spacecraft flew past Nix and Hydra, it observed two of the five moons of this heavenly body. If you've been following the news, you knew that New Horizons, it took nine and a half to get years, nine and a half years to get there. That was the spacecraft that flew by Pluto last summer. Everybody was all agog about that. Try again, green. Um, green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, before they bury acorns, some squirrels will bite off the tip so that the acorn will never do what? Oxen Hill. So it won't grow back into a tree? 
Give me the term, yes. So it won't. What's that term known as? Germinate? Germinate, that's it, yeah, it won't germinate. So it wants to make sure that when it buries its food, it's gonna stay food for when it finally comes back in the winter. All right, go again. Let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Pennies at one time were going to be made of a metal that apparently jammed up vending machines and couldn't be seen by doctors on x-rays, so they never minted them. It's the same metal that we use in our cans and in our foil. Aluminum. Oxen Hill. What is aluminum? Aluminum, absolutely right. All right, so listen for those clues over there. I'm giving you some clues all along here. Foil, can, aluminum, connect the dots, red. Yes, sir. It's you. Go. Oh, um, let's do body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, your question is as follows. If someone kicks you in the shins, which I hope they don't, what leg bone is going to hurt because it's known as the shin bone? <coughs> yes, Oxen Hill. The fibula? Mm, good try, not quite. Come on, William, how oh, you need these points. What is the other leg bone known as the shin bone called? That's the tibia, tibia, it's the tibia and the fibula. You had the right idea. Let's turn that light off at Oxen Hill. Ryan, go again, please. Let's do body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, a multiple choice question for you. Teams, if, you're, if you've got planter's warts, is it hard to walk, sit, or text? If you have planter's warts, Oxen Hill. Text. Not text. If you have planter's warts, is it hard to, hard to walk or sit or text? Sit. No walk. Planter's warts are the things you get on the bottom of your feet. A lot of times they develop if you don't wear shoes and you go to a swimming pool. Boy, they, they hurt like crazy. They're caused by viruses. Try again, red. Let's go. <clears throat> Zoo parade for 10. Zoo parade for 10 points. Teams, most all frogs reproduce by laying eggs. But there is a certain frog species they just discovered that gives birth to live polywogs. Polywogs being another name for these. Oxen Hill. Tadpoles? Tadpoles, yeah, good answer. Good, go. Ooh, the buzzer is rung. That was a quick round. Oxen Hill is at 95 points. William Hall at 65. We have plenty of points to give away yet. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't you go away. I started mentoring at my mentee, Dantre, four years ago. I always thought about doing it. It always seemed like a good idea. We were both nervous when we first met, but we kind of, everything kind of fell into place. Mentoring is important to anyone that's pretty fortunate in life to have a little bit of time to pass on that knowledge. Etienne's a very close friend. I look at him as a brother and a father figure. He taught me to just focus on the big picture because I would like to give back just like Etienne gave back to me. Be someone who matters to someone who matters. If you're like most families, you probably have video game fans in your home. But not every game is right for every kid, which is where the ESRB ratings come in. They help parents make informed decisions for their kids. And there's an easy-to-use mobile app that gives you detailed info on specific game ratings. Video game consoles have parental controls that you can set to block certain games by age rating. So they get all the fun, and you get peace of mind. Welcome back to Science Well, Nice to have you here today. Thanks for spending some time with us. We've got six outstanding young people here playing our game, one of whom was here last year because the Oxen Hill team is the reigning middle school science bowl champ after 30 years. Oxen Hill won last year. We're very proud of them, and I know William Hall is hoping to enter that championship rank this time. Let's go over and talk to the teams first to Oxen Hill. And Ryan, tell us about your school. It's uh, got some renown now, and a lot of the folks like uh, Carmela are on the poster advertising our game. We're real proud of the school. Tell me who your principal is. Our principal is Mr. Coleman. Mr. Coleman, yeah, and I know he's been here before. I know he's a big supporter of you guys. And who's the sponsor of your team? Our sponsor is Mr. Muniz. Yes, absolutely, and he has been here. Titus, thank you for all the support you've given, especially coming to help us judge. We appreciate that very much. And did you have any alternates on your team, Ryan? 
Yeah, Alton is Christine. Wonderful. We'll bring her out with Mr. Muniz in just a few moments here. I always like to ask teams what they like best about their schools. And if you brag about Oxon Hill Middle, which I hope you do, what do you tell them? Well, one of the best things about our school is our growth mindset. That the school all has a growth mindset, which means that we keep going in a positive direction. Yeah, boy, you, you, you've got to have that mindset. You know, you've got to have some kind of driving force, and that sounds like a pretty good one. You're all wearing matching shirts over there. Is that, are you an eagle or a hawk? Eagle. What, that's an eagle, and it's got a crown on the top. And uh, is there a message down below? Um, it says, it says where wait, eagles, eagles soar sky high and peace lives. I like that. That's a great motto for your school there. You guys look great. Ryan, uh, you're an eighth grader, is that right, or a seventh? Seventh. You're a seventh grader, so we'll maybe see you next year. You got another year of eligibility. What do you want to do when you get older? Well, I want to be a chemist. A chemist? You're in the right place here, because I know you love science, and this is the science bowl. And poor Ryan, I said, how'd they choose the captain over there? And he said, nobody else wanted it. Well, you're doing a nice job there. Carmela, nice to see you back again. <laughs> you're back from last year, and uh, how did it feel to be the champion? Really great. Yeah, yeah boy, you had a super happy. team last year, just as you do this year here. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I like photography. I play a lot of sports. Yeah, like what? Um, softball. We just finished the season, and I like soccer, too. Yeah, it's a nice mix, athletics and academics, you know, and it keeps you uh, a well-rounded person. And someday, what do you hope to do? Um, I really don't know, but... I guess an engineer or like a mathematician. Yeah, you have plenty of time to mull that over. You know, sometimes it's interesting how we end up in life, even though we have some plans early on. You'll be successful, whatever you choose. Alyssa, nice to have you on the show today. And uh, you were telling me that you're an already an entrepreneur and you hope to grow up and actually run a trucking company, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what kind of businesses do you run now? Um, I sell candy at school and I, um, I run lemonade stands just yeah. to raise money for like certain charities that my um, yeah. family supports. I think that's wonderful. And trucking, as we were talking earlier, uh, trucks run America. You know, that's the lifeblood along with railroads, but even more so. And uh, you have a relative who has a trucking company, is that mm -hmm. right? Who's that? Uh, that's my uncle. Your uncle, wonderful. I know he'd be real happy to see you join him or follow in his footsteps. Have a good second half. Let's go over to William Hall Academy. And Zaria, tell me about William Hall. Where is it? Um, it's in, um, it's in like, um, you know where Capitol Heights is? Yeah. yeah. It's in the Capitol Heights area. Yeah. Is it on Forest, in Forestville, that Forestville Road down there? No, it's on Marble Pike. Marlboro Pike, that's right. In fact, I remember when the school opened and we dedicated it, before the school was there, was a drive-in theater on that school site there. Now, does your school go from K to eight? Yes. It does go from K to eight, yeah. hence the academy. Uh, Jada's shaking her head no. Why no, Jada? This is not kindergarten. It's head start. Yeah, it's head start. Grade. Head start up through eighth grade, though? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's wonderful. What grade are you in, Zara? Eighth. You're in eighth grade. And I know uh, you've got a lot of support out there. Who's your principal? Um, Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans. And the sponsor of your team? Ms. Quo. Ms. Quo. And Ms. Quo is, she is Miss Science. She is behind the Science Bowl, Kids for Science, Science Fair. Marilyn, thank you for all that you do for these young people and for the science program in our county here. Any alternates on your, on your team? No. No, okay. And uh, the best thing about William Hall? The best thing about William Hall is the opportunities that we get as we go out of William Hall. Yeah. Like, we get a whole bunch of opportunities to get into a lot of different, like, high school. Yeah, well, that's it, because you want to know that you've got opportunities uh, to move on and move up, and uh, hopefully William Hall is preparing you, and I know that they are doing a good job there. And what do you want to do someday? I want to become a social studies teacher. Yeah, and we were talking about that before, and so few young people want to go into education. We're real proud of you, Zaria, and you'll Thank make you. a good teacher. You're welcome. Thank you. Jada, nice to have you with us today. What do you do in your spare time? I eat and I sleep. You eat and you sleep. That's, boy, though, everybody's got to do that. And if you're a good sleeper, boy, that's a gift. You know, some people, they just, uh, they toss and turn. What do you hope to do someday? I want to be a software engineer or a hacker. Wonderful. Or a, or a hacker. Okay, that's interesting. She has a great sense of humor, doesn't she? Caesar, nice to have you with us. Why'd you want to be on this show? Because I wanted to help the school win something. Yeah. And hopefully you're going to share with us 
uh, some of the things you know about science. Yeah, so it's a give and take here. And I like that, that you, you have pride in your school and you want to bring uh, more renown to it. Uh, what do you do in your spare time? I play soccer and I read. And you read. What kind of books do you like? Uh, mostly fiction. Mostly fiction, yeah. And someday, what do you hope to do? Become a neurosurgeon. A neurosurgeon. Because uh, you told me Ben Carson had a big influence on you, right? And yeah. he's, he's a very famous neurosurgeon. All right, guys. Let's get back to our game. 95 for Oxen Hill, 65 for William Hall. Lots of points to give away. Last correct answer came from Ryan, so start us out, young man. Let's go for mm. science. Pope Brie for 10. Pope Brie for 10 points. Teams, woolly bear sounds like an extinct earth sign, but it is actually one of these that goes through metamorphosis and becomes a moth. So a woolly bear is a what? What you got, Oxen Hill? A larva? More specifically? Maybe a butterfly? Mm, not quite, nope. William Hall, woolly bear. It sounds like an extinct earth sign, but in fact, it is one of these that then goes through metamorphosis and becomes a moth. So the woolly bear is a what? It's a caterpillar, it's a caterpillar. Nowadays, especially before the winter, we're taping this. You see those, they're orange and black and they go wiggling across the sidewalks and all. That eventually is going to change into an Isabella tiger moth, which is not nearly as attractive as that caterpillar. Okay, Red, go again. No points. Sign Pope Brie for 15. Pope Brie for 15 points is a visual question. Look at the monitor, please, in the studio, if you would. Looking like an eagle, this is actually a vulture, a griffin vulture, and on its back is a GPS device. Because these birds fly so high, they record weather data like wind speed and temperature, making them amateur versions of what kind of scientist? William Hall. Um. Jada and Caesar, you got to help her. She can't do it on her own. Caesar, I want to see you talking and weighing in. It's a team effort here. Oxen Hill, talk among yourselves in case I have to come to you. Meteorologist? Say it again. Meteorologist. Meteorologist. I mean meteorologist. Meteorologist. That's what I want to hear. Yes, an amateur meteorologist. Good. Okay. Green. Mm. Oh. Go ahead, Zaria. Body systems five. Body systems for five points. Teams, a hatch on a ship is a trap door. But if you eat something and go down the hatch, it's going to go down what food tube to your stomach? Ryan? The throat? The esophagus. Not, the give me another term, come on. The esophagus. That's it, that's what I want to hear. Okay, go red. Good job. Let's go for green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, you will probably never see a bumblebee at Starbucks, but in order to increase its chances of being pollinated, some plants are lacing their nectar with this familiar stimulant. William Hall. Caffeine. Well, again? Caffeine. Caffeine. Exactly right. Good. Go. Three. Um, Dateline Science for five. Dateline Science for five points. Teams, out in California, they can't believe it. Poisonous sea snakes are being washed up on the beach. We think as a consequence of what huge weather system that is going to be moving up and bringing plenty of rain and maybe snow to us this winter. William Hall. Um, Jada. Hurricane. No, not a hurricane. Oxen Hill, what is this huge weather system that could be bringing lots of rain and snow to our country? It is being blamed for all of these sea snakes being washed up. Come on, guys. Maybe it's a... El Nino. El Nino. Go green. 95 to 100. You're five points behind. Where next? Let's go. Um. Yes, ma'am. You pick. Me? Yes. Zoo Parade 20? No, no, Azaria, you're oh. the captain. You pick Zoo it. Zoo Parade 20? Mm -hmm. Zoo Parade for 20 points. Your teams, your question is as follows. They recently found a sea turtle that glows in the dark. Whoa. But it is not making its own light. It's just reflecting it because it has some kind of algae on its shell. So they call that sea turtle biofluorescent. And because it's not like a firefly that makes its own light, we can call it bio what? Oxen Hill. Bioluminescent. Luminescent, absolutely right. Thank you, Carmela. Boy, you were nudging him like there was no tomorrow. Come on, Ryan, you got to listen to her. The young lady, she knows her stuff. 
Okay, go red. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Team's multiple choice question. If you electrically charge a gas like argon or xenon, you can increase the propulsion power of that gas. You have turned that gas into an ion, an isomer, or an isotope. Which of those three, Ryan? An ion? Ion. You bet that's right. Good. Go. Red. <clears throat> Let's go for body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, your body can develop anemia if you don't have enough of these kinds of cells, the only ones in the body without a nucleus. <laughs> Oxen Hill. Red what you got? Red blood cells. Red blood cells, absolutely right. The only A nucleus cells, they're made in the marrow, and they need a lot of iron to keep that hemoglobin going to keep you from being anemic. Go red. Potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, when the ocean water gets too hot, which it is doing right now, it expels all of the algae that live on it symbiotically and turn white. That process of turning white has the same name as when you turn your laundry white. Bleaching. Oxen Hill. Bleaching? Bleaching, yeah, you put chlorine bleach in there. It's the same effect that's uh, taking place with those coral reefs, those polyps. Go red. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points, all right. Teams, Nobody plants banana seeds to get new banana plants. It can't be done. You have to reproduce them asexually because banana seeds are sterile because they have an odd number of these kinds of genetic markers. What are those genetic markers that they have an odd number of, Oxen Hill? Chromosomes? Yes, they have an odd number of chromosomes, so they can't produce viable gametes or sex cells. That's it. All right. Okay, Carmela's well, she's getting hot over there. She's, she's fanning herself. It's, the tension's building over there. 295. Come on, William Hall, we got the 25 point <laughs> questions. We need you to get back in there. Come on, Caesar, you gotta help out here. You gonna bring some honor to your school? You gotta help out. Go, Ryan. Let's go for Dateline Science for 20. Dateline Science for 20 points. This year, 2015, it's the 100th anniversary of Albert Einstein's theory of relativity where he proved that this force can bend light. What force did he prove could bend light? Ryan. Black hole? Not black hole, good try. What force did Einstein uh, prove in his theory of relativity can bend light? Do you want to? What you got? Um, no harm in guessing. Gravity. <laughs> Gravity's the right answer. Go red. Carmela said, I knew that. Go Red Oxen Hill. Let's go for, let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25, but a big one in that category. Teams, if a four pound bird, imagine you're at an airport. If a four pound bird runs into an airplane at 260 miles per hour, it generates 12 tons of this. If you know the formula, this equals mass times acceleration. The mass of the bird times the acceleration that it is flying, it generates 12 tons of what? For 25 points. Mass times acceleration equals what, William Hall? Speed. Ooh, not speed, good try. Mass times acceleration equals what? Oxen Hill. Force. Force it is, F equals MA. Good answer, go OH. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. The big one in that category, teams. Recently, paleontologists found a piece of amber. You know that stuff in Jurassic Park? And trapped inside was not a mosquito, but a flea. And they saw that it still had evidence of carrying that horrible disease that wiped out most of Europe. Malaria. 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 Not malaria. Good try. Oxen Hill, evidence in that flea of a disease that wiped out most of Europe, it comes in pneumonic, bubonic, and septicemic varieties. Plague. Plague, Plague was the right answer. Go again, red. Oh. That's <clears throat> Zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25. The big one in that category is a visual question. Look at the monitor, please. Teams, uh, fossil hunters recently found fossils for this creature that they have nicknamed the chicken from hell. Its real name is an oviraptosaur. 
I will give you 25 points if you can tell me two things about this dinosaur based on its name, an Oviraptosaur. It tells you two things about this creature. An Oviraptosaur. Oxen Hill. It's a dinosaur. It had, it's like bird-like, because <clears throat> it has a beak and feathers. It's, because it's, it's, it's like a bird, but then Not quite specific enough, not quite specific enough. William Hall, you've had a chance to think on this and muse on it. An oviraptosaur. Two things that that tells you about this creature. Um, I'll pass it to Caesar. Caesar. Uh, it's bird-like and it moves quickly. Uh, ov means egg layer. And raptosaur, if you saw Jurassic World, you know the raptors. They're the predators. It's a predatory bird that lays eggs, a predatory dinosaur. So no points, good try. Buzzer says, our game is over. We'll be back with a wrap up in just a moment. Don't go away. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Student aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. And welcome back to Sizeball. Hope you enjoyed this game at home. Very proud of all six of our players here. Let's check that final tally today. William Hall Academy 110. We made an adjustment in the score. You got more points because of a confusion between two. And the final tally for Oxen Hill 225. Oxen Hill one step closer to repeating as county champ. Alyssa and Ryan and Carmela, congratulations. And Christine. She's very proud of that team back there. Mr. Muniz, thank you for all you do. And let's see some big smiles over here. Caesar and Zaria and JD, you played a nice game here today. Ms. Quo, thank you for everything you do for them and for everybody in science. We hope to see you all next time on the Science Bowl. I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye.